Imagine Paul Giamatti as Mr. Feeney. Okay, so in The Holdovers, Paul Giamatti plays a cranky boarding school history teacher who's stuck supervising students over Christmas break whose parents can't pick them up. In particular, the rebellious kid named Angus, played by Dominic Sessa. And as the two of them are forced to spend more time together, along with the cafeteria lady, Mary, played by Davine Joy Randolph, they all collectively start coming to terms with their own traumatic past. My best way of describing Paul Giamatti in The Holdovers is this. Imagine Paul Giamatti as Mr. Feeney. That's the kind of performance he plays, and he is fantastic. He has the wardrobe, sophisticated mannerisms of calling people by last names, citing historical events to prove his point, and those snarky put-downs, except he swears to everyone, especially his students. He has all the knowledge, but only half the wisdom of Feeney. If anything, this movie would be a perfect story of Mr. Feeney losing and regaining his way as an educator. The movie's smart by showing through his interactions with Mary, he's perfectly capable of compassion, and when you see or hear about the way people have disrespected his teachings throughout the years, it's clear why he's such a curmudgeon. But his feet are still held to the fire when he insults students to their faces, makes lessons and tests too hard, claiming it's to push them to their limits, and if that really was what he was doing, it would be commendable, but it's really a way to lash out. And as much as he disciplines kids for being dishonest or not trying hard enough, he's guilty of doing the exact same. Mainly because he hasn't had anyone to push him to overcome his past until he finally gets stuck with these two. And that's really what makes the dynamic between the three of them work. Human beings are social animals who need to be surrounded by others who are accepting and supportive, but can also give you the tough love treatment when you act out of line. None of these guys have people like that in their lives, and in a couple cases, turn down people like that out of fear that they'll get hurt again, until they're forced to interact with each other and realize that they have to pursue people who make our lives better, therefore happier. Dominic Sessa did a good job in making you root for this kid, even in his worst moments, because while he's morally a better person than Giamatti, he still has some of the same flaws like shooting his mouth off or rubbing in his intelligence, I like how he was never an underachiever. He actually did better in Giamatti's class than most of the other boys. Davine Joy Randolph, though, in my opinion, didn't get as much depth in her arc as I would have liked at first. But she's there to be the blunt, tough love one in the group, which led to some of the best lines in the movie. My crowd absolutely ate up nearly every line that she had. Her blunt delivery was so spot on. My feet are cracked up every time she opened her mouth. But she also has suffered the most out of all the three of them, and yet, for most of the movie, she talks about it like it's nothing. There's a great moment at a Christmas party where she starts to unravel a little bit, but her emotional journey is one that we don't really see that much on screen, so it was a little hard to get super invested in her dramatically. But nevertheless, she was still easily the most entertaining part of the movie. If Alexander Payne wasn't the director of this, she would have stole the show, and um... On that note, it was really cool to see him in person because he's a director, he can actually show his ass up at movie events like this. And it took me until the holdovers to realize that Alexander Payne's direction always wrote that fine line between being stylish and subdued at the same time. When I saw the trailer, I noticed that desaturated 16mm look to it, but Payne went even further with the 1970s atmosphere by making all the studio logos at the beginning of the movie vintage, there's a color buy credit during the intro, and if you look really close, you can see deliberate scratches and cigarette burns within the frame. And as for the camera work and editing, the one trick Payne does that equally works in comedy and drama is to pull in or out on the characters as they're giving a monologue or realizing something crucial at the last minute. Now, this is by no means one of Payne's best movies, in my opinion. Some critics are already saying that this is his best work since Sideways. I'd say best since The Descendants. Hell, there were parts of Downsizing that I thought were more memorable and in-depth, which seems to be a controversial thing to say for some reason. But I say that because Payne's most recent movies over the last two decades involve the main characters taking a road trip in order to overcome their struggles, and without spoiling anything, there is one, but it takes over halfway through the movie to get there, and some of what I thought were the most pivotal moments are kind of montaged over or are implied off-screen compared to how drawn out the scenes in the school were. 
where they're in the same rooms over and over again, and once in a while, they do venture out into the small town nearby, and don't get me wrong, I knew going in this was mostly going to take place in this one school, and I give Payne credit for trying to do the opposite of what he's what he's used to, but even at its best moments, you know where the story's going to go, and I felt like a change of scenery would have elevated the material for me like it has with some of his other movies, but in any case, when The Holdovers comes out in November, you should definitely check it, check it out. The acting, writing, directing play an equal part in balancing out the humor and drama that comes with just the struggle of finding people in your life who can be as supportive as they are hard on you for the right reasons. You all know what I'm trying to say, right? 